Hi, and thanks for tuning in to the Texas Flycaster Network. Be sure and check out the website, www.texasflycaster.com. Texas Flycaster website and the YouTube channel. Every so often I'm lucky to have enough time to bring some gear to you and review this gear in order to help you make more informed decisions about fly rods and other things involved with fly fishing. Uh, I have recently become a ambassador for TFO so that means that I uh, of course, I'm limited to their products. They have some old fly rods and they have a new Axiom 2. And what triggered all this was the Axiom 2 fly rod because I uh, picked it up a few weeks ago, caught a fish on it, and it is a fantastic rod. It's kind of hard to put your finger on what's so great about it, but what I'm gonna try to do in this video is break down and compare the heavier weight TFO, Mangrove, BVK, and the new Axiom 2. These are three rods that, are, that have an emphasis on, they don't have a limit to, but an emphasis on the heavier weights. And of course here in Texas and on the salt water, you will find that you're gonna want something from six weight up to, depending on what you're after, you know, 10 weight. And these rods by TFO, They've kept some of these lines for a really long time, like the, the BVK and the uh, Mangrove. They've been around quite a while. I got them when they first came out. I have no idea how old they are, but it, they're fairly well proven and weathered in. And rods, they've sold a lot of them. I'm sure you can find them used. There's so many of them out there. Um, for me, it was very natural to become an ambassador for TFO because, of course, with the passing of Lefty Cray, who was one person that um, I met a few times and, and have kind of tried to tried to help carry on his his preaching to the masses about fly fishing. I, it was no and he was with TFO. It's a no brainer for me. Um, if you're into rod color, if you're into rod names, uh, if you're into spending between. Seven hundred and a thousand dollars for a fly rod, then this review won't be for you. This is for people who are interested in TFO rods that are very affordable and that bring fly fishing to the masses. And that's what I'm all about: is bringing bringing fly fishing to the mass public. So let me kind of reset my set here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these three rods right here and go through them one at a time and then we'll uh, um, kind of wrap the whole thing up. Anyway, is to, instead of taking a whole nine foot fly rod, we're just gonna take the top section of the rod, the tip section, pretend like that's the entire nine foot rod. So what we have here is three different rods, the BVK, the Axiom 2, and the mangrove. Let me start with the rod I use the most day to day, and that is the TFO mangrove. So what we're doing is we're pretending like this is the grip, the handle, and this is the tip of a nine foot rod. What I'm gonna tell you about is where the power is and where the tip is, in my opinion, for these fly rods. Now, my opinion is not based on science and it's not based on technology. It's based on the way I fish these rods day to day and day by day and how they feel to me with the fish on. Uh, the, up until now, this, this rod, the mangrove, was my go-to rod. It was always lined up and it was always ready to go. The reason being is that this rod has a great presentation 
distance for fly fishing for carp, which is what I do the most. It'll also load medium-sized flies very well and heavier leaders, heavier lines, and it's a killer in salt water for redfish. It's just bar none. One thing across the board on all three of these rods is that TFO rods are made in Korea and assembled in Korea. So what? Might be some problems with tariffs pretty soon, but for now, it's a very, very affordable rod. I think they run around $279. The tip, which would be on a nine foot rod, would be this section right up here on the mangrove, is very, very tender. So it doesn't, there's no power or load right here in the tip as you're casting this rod. And, and for demonstration purposes, it would be probably on a nine foot rod, the first section and part way into the second section of the rod is where that tip has the ultimate flex to it. So it's a very flexible tip. And then when you get down to here, the power starts to kick in on the nine, nine feet, nine foot rod, the power starts to kick in right about here. And then as you, as you go down, the power really kicks in on this rod, this is eight weight really kicks in on this rod and even on this tip is a pretty good demonstration of, of what this rod is all about you can see the tip really moves but you get down to the towards the butt section of the rod and it's stiff as a board so my feelings on this rod casting the eight weight is i don't throw huge flies and i do not throw any sinking lines probably and i hardly even in, throw any intermediates so Good rod, great for short presentation. For me, I can't, the cast breaks down at about 55, 65 feet. Can't go much further than that with this rod. That's the TFO Mangrove. Been around for years, and knowing TFO is gonna be around for a lot more years. It may evolve, I hope it does, it'd be great. Components are okay on all these rods, they're very comparable. You're not comparing components when it comes to these rods because there's not a dime's worth of difference in them. Um, one benefit of the, uh, the mangrove is it does have the, uh, the uh, alternate colored rings on the grip to let you know just by looking at the grip, whether it's a five, six, seven, eight weight, it, that's the way the, the rings are done on the cork. So that's really handy. Next rod we're gonna look at Probably, I cannot remember, it's been so long, probably the first one to come out, BBK, that's named after Bernard Victor Cray or Lefty Cray. It comes in a full range of, of weights, and I, have, I must have about five of these rods because I use them a lot for their, for their average ability, what I would say. In other words, they, they do everything quite well. <laughs> this rod, imagine this is the nine footer and this is the handle. The deal is on this, it has a very even taper way down till you get probably past and into the third section down of the rod and then the power kicks in on this rod. It is very evenly distributed power, a power curve is what I'd say. And so this rod, I always take two because I can keep a sinking line on it and cast it quite well and I can keep or put big flies on here and cast them quite well, you know, top water flies and things like that. For whatever reason, fitting my cast, uh, this rod does that. So these two rods do two different things uh, in, their, in their own family of, of doing things for fly fishing. In other words, this one is a lot more salt oriented in my opinion. This one goes fresh or salt, just fine, but I like the presentation ability of the mangrove for salt water and, and tight loops in close distances. Redfish. Now here's the new wild card. This rod is the Axiom 2 and I own the original Axiom rods when they came out and this is not an Axiom rod. This is, it, it, to call it an Axiom is just a nameplate on it. It's like calling a uh, 2017 Cadillac a 1945 Cadillac. It's just not the same at all. Same name, but way different. This rod is very special. And it became special as soon as I casted it. 
it's very easy to cast. It has an interesting power curve to it, in my opinion, that because of the graphite, because of the, the way that it's tapered, I wasn't sure about the rod at first, but the first fish I caught, I knew it was something special. I knew by casting, I thought it was something special, but then I got a fish on. What happens with this rod is it's got a very even power curve to it. And that makes this rod real easy to cast for someone just starting out. I think it runs about $50 or $60 more than either one of these rods. It's in the $350 range. And if you like color, it's the best color of the three. I could care less about that. Um, and this rod fools you because I bought it in an eight weight and I, I ran it out in an eight weight. And you think it's not, it, it's so thin compared to the old TFO rods and nothing even close to feeling like one of the old Axiom rods. You think it's not going to do it, but what it does is it really, really does it. My best comparison on this rod, the new Axiom 2 by TFO, is it's, it's probably the top of the line Scott. If you like the way a Scott rod casts, the best Scott fly fishing rods, then you're going to like this rod a whole lot. I think if you're just starting out, of these three, you would want to start spending the 50 bucks more or whatever and get the Axiom 2 because it is a rod you won't outgrow anytime soon. It has uh, fine components. You know, if, if, if I had the choice in life, I would have all my rods built on TFO blanks with better components. I would, the best components because the rods are, are just great. But for now, uh, and I'm dying for a one piece in this Axiom 2, I think it would be spectacular. Um, we, we may not have any one piece rods coming from TFO anytime soon. It, it's very limited appeal. Axiom 2 by TFO is a fabulous rod. I think, you know, I haven't had a chance to cast all flies and all lines on it yet, but I have a feeling that this rod is going to perform somewhere probably in between these two rods. I know what it does for me now. It's highly, highly, highly accurate compared to these two. I mean, it's extremely accurate. The, the kind of the, the reverb, the recoil on it is minimal. So it doesn't have a lot of, lot of that at the end of, the, of each end of your, your hurry up and stop casting. And when it came time to lift, to kind of put some put some backbone into it to turn this fish this rod digs deep I mean it is a fabulous fabulous rod that's the Axiom 2 and I can guarantee you, you'll see it more um, in my videos and I will own a few more of these before time's up on this uh, that's a TFO Axiom 2 fine rod it's I would say it'll cross over salt or fresh water um, like I was saying, the power curve on this is all the way down the rod. The one thing that you have to compensate for, these, these will be my two main rods for carp. And one thing I noticed is, since it's got a deeper, deeper power curve where the power kicks in lower on the rod, imagine this being a nine foot rod, kicks in right about here, halfway down the rod. The reaction time, what we do on, on carp, when we, when we set the hook on a carp, a lot of times is what I call a, a lift strip. And so we're, we're stripping and lifting at the same time. Well, if you're doing that and the power curve doesn't kick in until down here, then you lose this much time. The time I've calculated, and I'm good at calculating time since I'm a photographer, between here and here and, and the power kicking in to set the hook, this one sets it right up here and it's about 1 60th of a second longer to go down to here to set that hook and get in deeper into the power of the rod so it's about a 60th of a second you'll get used to it but at first you'll go up you'll be pulling on it going you know this is going to take a little longer to set this hook regardless once you get down into the power of the rod it will set the hook and that's what happened to me on that fish i caught that you saw on previous the video just right before this video started so that's a big difference right there in that mangrove sets the hook way up in here, great for redfish and all that. 
your reaction times and the way you think about this other, the new Axiom 2, you need to think about it setting down in here and really putting the juice to that hook point to drive it home down in here instead of up in here. So that's, that's one thing to pay attention to and your reaction times have to be good. And you <clears throat> really have to fish a lot to kind of get down to the brass tacks of, of where and when a rod actually begins to show power to set a hook. But that is one thing for sure. It takes a, about a sixtieth of a second longer for it to get into the power of the rod and set the hook. That's a big negative that people have always, I think, voiced is where the power is laying in Scott fly rods. So what? If that doesn't work for you, you know, go from an eight to a nine. Uh, this is an eight. I think I'm gonna be fine with the eight. I'll end up with a nine, a seven, a six, and all that. But for now, that's what I've got. I hope this information works for you. Again, these are TFO rods. This is my review and comparison and contrast of the Mangrove, the BBK, and the new, new to me, Axiom 2. I think it's been out for a little while, but it's new to me. If you guys need any more information, go to tforods.com. Contact me. I can get your hand, if you're local, I can get out and get your hands on one of these rods, either at a fly shop or maybe even at the TFO uh, warehouse. And I look forward to seeing you on the water more often nowadays. And have a happy 4th of July. Enjoy this video. Let me know what you think about these three rods, if you happen to own these. And contact me. My phone number's down there. And my email is down there. Have a great weekend, great 4th of July 2018, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks for surviving another Texas Flycaster video. As you know, this is supplementary to www.texasflycaster.com. You can find a lot more information there, and you can also book me for guiding services if you want. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the water.